Hi, welcome to the Bucks County training video for election officials. My name is Tom. I'm the director of the Board of Elections. My name is Kelly. I'm the assistant director. And today we're going to be going through our training PowerPoint as well as showing you guys a short video on how to set up and break down the voting machines. So let's get started. Delivery of supplies. So the delivery of the supplies is going to take place the weekend before the election, Saturday through Sunday. When you get your supplies, you're just going to want to verify that the supply box is for your precinct and also the two blue bags, one for provisional ballots and one for your poll books are also for your district. And you're going to want to sign the receipt after you verify they are for your precinct. You can then check the contents of the box. Your delivery driver prior to showing up will schedule everything with you so you can set a date and time that works for both of you. Prior to election day, you're also going to want to visit your polling place. You're going to want to verify that the machines there are for your precinct and that they are the correct machine numbers. You're also going to want to double check that there are electrical outlets available. And just as a reminder, there will have two uh, extension cords that both have uh, three prong outlets that you'll be able to use to set up your machines. High school students. So uh, several of you may have high school students that work for you uh, as either clerks or machine inspectors. They just must be 17 years of age, be a US citizen and a resident of Bucks County and enrolled in the secondary educational institute. Right? They will just need written approval from someone from their school and also from their parent or guardian. And uh, each precinct can have up to two high school students helping out. Okay, election day constables. Constables are appointed by the Court of Common Pleas and they're there to uh, keep the peace throughout the day election day. They serve from 6.30 a.m. to the close of polls. Uh, they can clear a pathway to uh, help make sure that voters can get to the sign-in table and they work the entire day till close of polls. A good thing they can do at the end of the day is after 8 p.m. they can make sure that anybody that was there prior to 8 still gets the chance to vote. Okay, so that's the election day constables. The start of the day. So what you're gonna wanna do when you get there, you're gonna set up your machines and lay out any polling material that's in your postings envelope. If you have any referendums, they'll be in there and you wanna hang three copies of that in a conspicuous place. You'll hand out the ID badges supplied in your supply box. Uh, the judge of elections will administer oaths of office to all of the other officials. You'll fill out and sign the pay sheets. There are two copies, make sure you do both. And the judge can explain procedures to all the ele other election officials. And you wanna make sure that you have the, everything ready to be open by 7 a.m. If you have any problems getting uh, up and running, feel free to call our office. If you look inside the election manual, the front cover, so our phone numbers for us and the voting machine warehouse, we'll be happy to help you with any problems. So start of the day. Uh, one of your poll book pages. Um, so if you see this inactive affirmation required, the voter must complete an affirmation. We'll go into a little more detail in the next couple slides. If you see ID required, first time voter, that's all that means. It's either their first time voting or their first time voting in a new precinct and they'll have to show ID. I can go in that a little bit more as well. OT, this means that the voter requires assistance and has filled out a form to get assistance in the past, so there's no need to refill out the form again, but they are allowed to have assistance. Right here, the election officials' initials, as well as the voters' number, these come from the numbered list of voters and would be the uh, order in which the voter signed in. Uh, we'll go into a little bit more detail on that later, but the election official would initial next to there the voter. Absentees, so this is an absentee watermark, and this shows that an absentee was issued to this person and might not actually have actually gotten returned to us. So that is why you wanna check your absentee listing or call our office. We can double check if the voter had returned their absentee or not. If they did not, they cannot vote on the machine. They would have to issue a provisional ballot to them. We'll give more info on provisional ballots towards the end of this, but please call our office prior to doing any. If a voter has gotten an absentee or now a mail-in ballot and returned it, a watermark will show in the poll book showing that they cannot vote on the machine. All right, remember that inactive voters must be permitted to vote. Uh, only after they confirm their address or provide a new address by completing the affirmation form. And again, 
we'll cover that right now. So an affirmation is if a registered elector has moved or possibly if we sent them something and it came back to us as undeliverable. This is just so we can confirm their address and make sure everything we have is correct. Uh, once the voter fills out the affirmation, they can vote on the machine as normal. First time voters, so these are different IDs that are acceptable. It does not need to be a photo ID. It could be just something that was sent to them through the mail that shows their current address on it. So photo ID, like a driver's license or a military ID, anything like that that shows their name and picture and date of birth and address, totally fine. But again, non-photo IDs are acceptable. It could be a uh, voter registration card. It could be just a utility bill or a firearm permit. All are acceptable so long as it has their current address on it. All right, assistance. So this is the declaration of assistance form. So for the first time that they uh, come in and need assistance, they would fill this out. And then all future elections, the OT will appear next to their name in the poll book. And this will show that they are allowed to have assistance and they don't need to fill it out each time if they already have the OT next to their name in the poll book. And for the record of assisted voters, this is what the judge of election would fill out for every voter that does an assistance form it needs to be listed on this form and must be signed by the judge of elections at the end of the night. Numbered list of voters. So this is, as the voters come in, you would uh, write their names down and the party. And this is the uh, number that's on the left-hand side next to each name is what would go into the poll book when they sign, all right? During a primary election, you're gonna wanna just, that's the only time that you're gonna wanna do their party on the line. Uh, during a general election, it's not necessary. Fail safe voting. So this is if a voter has failed to change their address with uh, our voter registration department, they may vote one last time at their old polling place, no matter when the voter moved. Uh, the voter just must be registered and then their name must appear in the poll book. So for instance, if somebody were to have previously lived in Ben Salem and moved to Doylestown, they are permitted to go back to their old polling place one last time to vote. And there they would do an affirmation to get their address changed for the next time, but they would be permitted to vote in their old polling place for that last time. So again, you wanna confirm that the voter is in your district, uh, so in their poll book. Uh, if the voter is not in the poll book, call voter registration. Again, our numbers are on the inside of your election manual, and we'll be able to tell that voter where they need to go to vote. So if they are in your poll book, have them complete the affirmation of elector to update their name for the future. Record the name on the numbered list of voters tablet and in the poll book as normal. The voter signs the poll book and they vote on the machine. Once that affirmation comes back to our office after the election, we'll update their address and information and then the next election, they'll be in the proper uh, poll book. This is the name change and change of address. So this is if somebody say gets married and their old name is still in the poll book. They can fill this out and sign the poll book and vote in the machine and we would get the form and change their name so that it would be correct the next time they come to vote. Okay. And then if the voter moves, they must, they've, they'll fill this form out, but only if they move within the same voting district in Bucks County. Right. And it must be signed. We can't make any changes to their voting record without a signature. So that's very important. Cancellation and deceased notices. Um, if somebody passes away, we can absolutely cancel them, but we need a signature of a spouse or a relative. So if somebody comes in and they say, my husband's still in the poll book, but he passed away, you would give them the deceased notice, have them fill it out, and make sure that they sign it because we can't cancel them without um, the signature of a spouse or relative. Uh, and then there's the regular cancellation notice. Uh, it's if they just wish to cancel their uh, voter registration. We can't cancel them without the voter themselves signing the form. So you can't have anybody else sign that form. We can't cancel somebody because somebody else signed it. Okay. 
a fleeing voter. So this would be if somebody comes in to vote, signs in the poll book, you give them a ballot, and they do not cast their vote. They don't put their ballot into the scanner. Um, at that point, they would be a fleeing voter. And you would want to make sure that you write the name if you catch it on the front of your poll book. And if you don't know their name, just make sure that you write one fleeing voter on the cover of the poll book so that we can try to rectify the totals at the end. And then you just want to make sure that ballot that they had left there, if they did, if they let a ballot left it at the, uh, the booth, you cannot put it in for them. So you would take that ballot and spoil it and put it into your spoiled ballot envelope. And then this is just very important reminder, all voters must sign the poll book before voting. If they don't sign the poll book, they can't vote. If they are not in the poll book, they cannot vote on your machine. You wanna call us and we will check and see where they're supposed to vote and um, we'll get them into the right precincts. Okay, so for after check-in. So after a voter checks in, the voter is gonna receive a ballot and be directed to the voting area. So previously, if you had worked before, this is where they would be given a valid voter card. Uh, now they're just be giving, since it's a paper ballot, they'll be given their paper ballot. During a primary, you wanna make sure that it's for their specific party, either a Democrat or Republican. Uh, if it's a general election, everyone will get the same ballot, okay? so. Uh, once they're given their ballot, uh, the machine inspector will hand them a file folder, just a plain manila folder for privacy for when they're transporting their ballot to and from the voting area. The voter will make their selections and proceed to the ballot scanner. There, the voter will cast their ballot and leave the file folder to be collected as needed, and they can be recirculated to other voters. Okay, so passive electioneering. So, Passive electioneering is uh, when someone comes into the polling place who may be wearing a partisan or party supporting either hat or button or shirt, any kind of paraphernalia. We wanna strongly urge voters to either remove or cover up this type of paraphernalia before entering the polling place. But in the event that a voter refuses to remove it, uh, in no way should we not let them vote. They must be able to be allowed to vote uh, and be able to get in and out. So we wanna encourage voters to remove any paraphernalia, but we cannot infringe on their right to vote if they refuse to do so. Watchers, so only people allowed in a polling place are people that are either the election officials, individuals that are voting or waiting to vote, and then there are watchers. So a watcher must be able to show the judge of election their watcher certificate, but the certificate can remain with the watcher at all times. There can only be one watcher for each candidate or political party in a poll at a time, and they're permitted to remain after the close of polls outside of the enclosed space. No political material while inside of the poll can be handed out or given to any voters, and watchers must keep their own list of voters. And the outside of your enclosed space is really just your your personal space. So you don't want them to interfere in any way with your the counting process. And though the watcher certificate may say a different precinct, as long as a watcher has a certificate from Bucks County, they can watch in any poll anywhere throughout the county. Okay, so at the end of the day, you want to close your polls at 8 p.m., but any voter that was in line prior to 8 p.m. must be able to still cast their vote. So again, this is a good spot where you can have a constable to say this was the last person in line at eight o'clock, let everyone vote that was here, and then you're gonna wanna close down your voting machines. We're gonna have a video after this that shows set up and breakdown of machines, so just stay tuned for that. You're gonna record votes on your return sheets, right? You're gonna complete the certificate of votes cast, take down any posters and straighten up the area as best as you can to get it back to how it was when you got there in the morning. You're gonna return their machines to their cases, put them back in the cage along with any unused ballots and lock the cage. Return all uh, USBs from the scanners are gonna come back to the courthouse or government service center, depending on where you are in the county. You wanna make sure you also bring back the voted ballot bags. This is very important. They must come back with your supplies at the end of the night. So each scanner will have two USBs and then you're gonna to wanna to grab the voted ballot bags as well. 
absentee and mail-in ballots. So this has changed a lot from previous elections. Uh, absentee ballots were previously sent to the polls to be counted and a voter could then show up at the polls to void their ballot. This is not the case anymore. So with absentee and mail-ins, it'll appear in the poll book if they've submitted an application or if their ballot has returned. Right? If a uh, voted absentee ballot was returned to us, then the voter can no longer vote at the polls. Their vote has already been returned. If the voter had applied for an absentee or a mail-in ballot and the ballot was not returned to us, they can vote, but only by provisional ballot. They cannot vote on the machine. This is because ballots are no longer sent to the polls and there's no way to void the ballot. They have until 8 p.m. election night to return their voted ballot to the Board of Elections, so this is why they would only be able to vote on provisional. You will get an absentee and mail-in listing at the polls. This will show you uh, the date that the ballot was returned. So for instance, on this sample sheet, only one of these people that applied for a ballot had returned it. So any of the voters that don't have a ballot return would be able to vote, but only by provisional ballot. And for the case where this person returned their ballot, they cannot vote on the machine or by, by provisional, their ballot has already been returned. All right, certificate of votes cast. This at the end of the night, you're just gonna to wanna to put your total votes on the lines here. For provisional ballots, you don't have to put anything. And for absentee and mail-ins as well, you will not put anything on those lines because they will not be going to the polls anymore. All right, when you return your supplies at the end of the night, these are the items that you wanna keep right on top so we can get you in and out as quick as possible. There's going to be an orange pouch from your uh, supply boxes. This is going to where you're going to want to put the USBs from your uh, scanners. You're going to want to return your poll books and envelope I and envelope C. These are the envelopes that have the tapes from your voting machines. Uh, those are the tapes that show all the results. And then in your C envelope, it's also going to have your write-ins. Okay. Uh, you're going to want to have one copy of the pay voucher you filled out in the morning, uh, the ballot envelope, the spoiled ballot envelope for any spoiled ballots throughout the day, and your provisional ballot envelopes. You also must bring back the voted ballots. This is the black bag that was attached to your scanners. You're gonna wanna make sure those come back to us. Okay, so the following areas listed here would go to the Government Service Center in Levittown to drop off. Anybody else that's not listed on this would come to the old courthouse admin building in Doylestown. That's where you would drop off your supplies. And as a change from previous elections, you would now come in on Broad Street at the loading dock. Provisional ballots. So anyone you think requires a provisional ballot, please call our office prior to issuing one. Uh, most of the time, it's if somebody has shown up at the wrong poll, we can direct them to go back to the correct polling place. Uh, also, if it's for an absentee or mail-in, we can double check to make sure it's appropriate to give them one. So please call our office prior to issuing one. You'll refer to your uh, election manual, the green pages in there are uh, for provisional ballots and give a step-by-step -step process so you can read along that. But again, please call our office prior to issuing a provisional ballot. And these are some instructions for the provisional ballots. Okay. And thank you uh, to everybody that works. And right now we're gonna now show you the videos that we've made up for the new voting machines. Hi, I'm Bob. And I'm Tom from the Bucks County Board of Elections. Uh, we're showing you today what to expect to see when you get to the polling place on election day. As you can see, you'll get a cage that has all of your voting equipment. It will be have signage on it that will tell you which district it is from, and on the back side, all of the equipment that will be inside. There is a lock on the front cage, and a combination will be sent out in your orange bag with all the paperwork.
on the top shelf, you will see there was a six-foot table that holds two clear casts. And you have two ballot bags here that'll be fully assembled, ready to be hooked on. On the bottom shelf, you have a four-foot table, another clear cast, clear access, and a backup battery. And you also have all your ballots will be on the second shelf. Due to the coronavirus pandemic, we're also including several cleaning products to help you throughout the day. You'll have sanitizing wipes, hand sanitizer, masks, rubber gloves, alcohol wipes, and a cloth for the voting machines. You'll want to set up both of your clear cast machines on the six foot table. The six foot table unfolds. And a clear access unit can be, clear cast unit can be set up on either end of the table. You'll have two clear cast units at the poles. On the front of your clear cast unit, we'll, we'll show you what precinct it is and the machine number. We make sure your district's right and the precinct number's right. Also on the back of it, you have a ballot bag that hooks on. You want to do it again? The ballot bag will also say the precinct that it is for. It can be hooked up to the back of the machine by simply sliding it into its alignment slots. You also then want to seal the bag with the open poles seal that will be included inside the bag. Set up for voting, simply plug in the machine. Also, you will get two zip ties to zip tie your bag to the scanner. It's very simple. It goes through here. It goes through like this. And they, then you just pull it tight. As you can see, as soon as you plug in the machine and it powers up, a polls open report will print. You'll then be prompted at a login screen to log into the election. The passwords to log in are provided to you in the orange pouch that's given to the judge of elections and your supplies. You'll then be prompted to open polls. And an open polls report will print. You are now ready to start casting ballots. Upon opening the polls, the tape can be removed and the election officials can sign to open the polls. The sheet will also include the protective counter number and public counter number that can be put onto your return sheets. After signing in the poll book, instead of giving the voters a valid voter card, they would be given the ballot for their correct precinct. During a general election, ballots are generic. During a primary, they will be party specific. A voter will also be given a privacy sleeve for when they transport their voted ballot from the voting area to the ClearCast unit. After making the voter selections, they can put them into their privacy sleeve and take it to the voting machine. The ballot can be put into the scanner in any direction, upside down, front facing, or backwards. The machine is processing the ballot and says thank you for voting after the ballot is accepted. The cards accepted has now increased, noting the new vote. The ClearCast unit has a battery backup device in case of a power failure. However, if the battery fails after an extended period of time, there is an emergency ballot bag that is in your supplies. The emergency ballot bag can be set up by opening it up, extending the folding arms inside, closing, and sealing the zippers. Voters can then cast their ballots 
into the emergency ballot bag. This ballot bag can then be returned to us with your election supplies where they will be scanned centrally. A four foot adjustable table will also be in your supplies. This will be to set up your ADA clear access machine. This has an adjustable height so that you can set it so that it has enough clearance for a wheelchair to get under. Each polling place will have one clear access unit. All your cables will be hooked up and ready to go. The only cable you have to hook up is to your printer. This cable from your ELO to your printer goes in the top port of your printer. If you do not have it plugged in, the ELO will let you know that it hasn't been connected or hasn't been turned on. The clear access can be powered on by hitting the power button in the top right corner. And the printer has a power button at the lower left-hand corner from the rear of the machine. After powering on the machine by hitting the power on button in the top right and powering the printer on in the bottom right corner, you would go to the poll worker login screen. This will be the same password used to log into your clear cast unit. You would then want to open polls. The machine is now set for voters. Each time a voter needs to use the clear access unit, the voter password must be put in by a poll worker. This password is also supplied in the orange pouch in your supply box. You'll then select your precinct and proceed to hit vote. The voter will then be able to take over and go from here. If voter needs so, they can use headphones or an ADA keypad to assist them with voting. They can then make their selections. Prior to printing their ballot, they can review all of their selections. If they want to make any changes, they can go back, deselect an option, and select their new one. To cast a write-in, select the write-in box and type in who you would like to vote for. After reviewing their selections, they can select print. A prompt will confirm that they want to print their ballot. Select print, and a ballot will automatically print from the ELO's printer. The voter can then confirm that their ballot has printed, and a ballot will print double-sided that then can be cast into the clear cast unit. To close the polls on the clear access unit, change this voter the role back to poll worker and enter your poll worker code. Again, this is the same code that you use to open the polls. You'll then select close polls and you can print a report to be put into your C envelope. After the report prints, you can click OK to close the polls. You'll then want to shut down the machine.
After eight o'clock and every voter has cast their ballot, you would then close the polls. To close on the clear cast unit, click on the top left corner. You'll then want to select the poll worker role and log back in. This is to prevent any voter from accidentally hitting it. You'll then want to select the close polls option. Are you sure you want to close the polls? You can select OK. And a report will automatically print. The machine will automatically print four copies of the tape, one to go in the C envelope, one to go in the I envelope, one to go into the B envelope, and one to be hung at the polls. You can then select to print a write-in report and it will automatically print the write-ins that were cast throughout the day. Once the write-in report has finished, simply select shut down in the bottom right corner and select OK to confirm. The ClearCast unit will then begin to shut down. After the machine has completely powered down, you can unplug the unit. You would then Open the machine side with the keys that are in your orange pouch. You would cut the seal closing the store and remove the two USB drives that are in the machine. USB drives can then be put back into your orange pouch to be returned with the election supplies. Voted ballot bag can then be detached. Close the ballot opening and attach the red seal. The voted ballots must be returned with your supplies at the end of the night. To assist in returning your supplies, we have a handcart so you can carry your voted ballots, your supply box, your poll book bag, and provisional bag. If you power down all your equipment, your voting equipment can be put back in the carry bags they came in. You have two for the scanners and one for the clear access. And they can be returned back to the cage in the shelves they were on. Be sure to also put any unvoted ballots back into the cage and lock the cage prior to leaving. Remember to double check that you have all voted ballots and all other supplies that need to come back to the courthouse, as well as the orange case that has the USBs that includes the votes cast in the de- throughout the day. Thank you for everything that you do as poll workers. If you have any questions come election day or prior to, please feel free to call our office. Our numbers are available on the inside cover of your election manual, which is in your supply boxes, as well as on the website at www.buckscounty.org. If you go to the Board of Elections page and scroll to the Election Officials tab, there you can find many helpful links and videos. Thank you again, and take care.